where the ball and the fly hit each other. And just following this up. There is no straight line in this thing anywhere. No straight lines. And so you'll never see me use a straight chisel. I didn't, I didn't train a straight chisel. Um, and so you really want to start, even if you're just roughing things in, you always want to start with a tool that essentially has the curve that you're looking for. There are people that, that teach how to carve a ball and claw with a straight. You can, they, they spend a lot of time with a straight tool, but I can have mine done by the time this is roughed up. So I feel I've got the right house, because I've got the right method. You know, there are many different ways to do this. Um, but I feel the most efficient one is the best. And I'm also ignoring the web. There's going to be a web up here between the claws, but I'll leave that to the very end because it's really only about a sixteenth of an inch high. So it's not really anything I have to worry about now. So what I'm going to do now is, in order to make sure my equator is really a circle, I'm going to start to go around this thing like this and shave ball. And this tool will give me pretty much the curve that I want. It's a little flat, but it's close. And so I'm always anchoring my hands on the work. Like you can't carve like this any more than you sign your name like this. You always have to have your hands anchored on the work because with carving, it's gas and break at the same time. So when I'm doing this, I'm holding the tool back with this hand and I'm pushing with this hand like this all the time. And so if I want to let my tool go to a certain spot, I have to put a lot of pressure on it and just release this hand enough so that it passes through. But I've always got a lot of power on it. You can't do that if you're just pushing it like this with no anchor. You need to anchor. You'll see woodworkers have calluses on, the, on their hands and their elbows and the outside of their forearms from, from all this leaning stuff. And so that's how you get the control that you need. I'm always, I've always got one part of my hand, well, at least one, usually both hands resting on the work. And so now I'm using this tool to smooth out the ball a little bit more. This is, uh, this mahogany is nice and straight grain. That's why I grabbed it. It happened to be the only piece of four inch mahogany I had that was carvable. But uh, when you look at old furniture, the stuff that they carved, they used nice, smooth, kind of boring wood. Whereas the stuff that, like a tabletop, or something that's a war front, that's where they use the nice fancy wood. But they use the nice straight stuff for carving because you really don't want highly figured wood for carving because the grain is very, uh, not unpredictable, but it's not straight. And so you have to constantly switch back and forth to accommodate for the grain direction. This stuff, this is pretty much a nice straight piece. So I'm going around the equator, just shaving it like this and I'm pulling it towards me, but both my hands are anchored on this thing, so I'm not going to stab myself with it. I know some of you will, but I'm just going to. And the other, again, I'll switch hands because sometimes it's just easier to use my left hand than my right hand. I'm naturally right-handed, but I taught myself to carve with, with both hands from the beginning, so I really can carve about equally with both hands. Um, and that saves a lot of time, too. A lot of time. Because if you don't carve with both hands, you're constantly having to reclamp the work to accommodate the direction that you're going. So I, you know, someone who just carves, who's just right-handed, they'd have to, in order to carve in this direction, they have to spin it around. But, uh, teach yourself how to carve with either hand. It's a lot easier. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking a, a gouge that's a fairly curvy one, number eight, and I'm doing the hollow between the claws as it comes up towards the ankle. So there's a hollow space in there, sort of before your thumb can fit in there. And so I'm just going to start making that transition 